Good morning, everyone. Uh, Grandma D here. I am here to share one of my favorite spaghetti recipes today. Uh, it's the weekend, uh, and uh, this is usually when I do this type of a recipe. I need a little more time sometimes because um, we're going to cook spaghetti squash today as a substitute for our spaghetti in our spaghetti and spaghetti sauce recipe. Uh, spaghetti squash is a great alternative to regular spaghetti. It's ever so slightly sweeter, but it has very low calories, very low carbs. Um, it just tastes a little sweeter naturally. It is very low in sugar, and uh, you can fill your plate with spaghetti squash and not even be close to the carbs you would have if you had that much spaghetti, regular pasta. So uh, we're going to get started with this. I've done a little prep work here, and I got a couple things that I wanted to go over with you and show you. Uh, I did cut my first spaghetti squash in half, and we are going to cut the second one. I gotta move these out of the way. Sometimes my tray jumps around a little bit when I'm cutting a squash because they're pretty hard. Now I buy these and I typically buy them and then they sit on my counter for at least a week, sometimes longer because they are so hard when they pick them. They're not even close to being ripe. And so um, I do grow my own in the summertime when I can. And uh, I will try to find that photo from a couple of years ago when my spaghetti squash did so wonderfully. And I'll insert a picture at the end of this video. And uh, so when you cut your spaghetti squash, you need a good sturdy knife. Uh, this one I really like. I have two of these. They have the spikes on the end. So when you spike them into something, they really grab. And uh, they are a serrated edge knife. And... These two knives were not expensive, um, and I really love them. I use them on the daily versus a great big, huge cutting knife. I mean, they work fine. There are times when you need a bigger knife, but for this, it works fine. So basically what I do is I just get on the edge of the squash, and I work it in there, and then I work away from me like this. So in case the knife does slip... See, now these have been setting on my counter for over a week, so they're softer now. Then you turn around and you got to go back the other way towards the top where the stem is. Now we will come, let's see, uh, we'll start on this side and work our way down. And as you get it cut more and more, see, it just split. So, and I'm going to cut here a little bit more so that I have an even cut at the top. And then it will sort of start to split and usually you can just pull it but if you can't you can take a spoon jam it in there go like this twist the spoon and it will and it'll split the squash so this one is split so that's pretty easy when they're ripe it's pretty easy now we're going to take the seeds out and uh, you can save the seeds if you want to grow your own or you can get you some seeds of your own from the store. I have saved seeds in the past and I have an envelope of them that I use and I have ordered heirloom seeds in the past as well. Those work great. There we go. That's our first boat. Now the thing about spaghetti squash is when it gets cooked and it takes like an hour and a half, it takes a little while. So, um, and I, I cook them on 400. I just put it on 400. You can do it a little lower if you want to roast them a little slower. That's totally up to you. And then when they're cooked, you can just take a fork, which I'll show you, and you just start pulling it away. And it's in strings like spaghetti. And it's great because I love spaghetti. And um, I've always been a fan of spaghetti. You know, but the darn carbs, they're bad. If you have diabetes like I do, you need to be mindful of that. And because of that, um, spaghetti squash, butternut squash is a great alternative. Uh, chunked butternut squash, chunked uh, acorn squash. Um, I don't need a lot of acorn squash. Um, I read somewhere that it's of the, of the big three, you know, like acorn, 
butternut or spaghetti squash. Acorn squash is a little higher in calories and sugar than these. And, you know, I mean, we'll just do the best we can. And I'm also uh, going to make homemade garlic bread. Um, I use regular bread and I make a mixture of butter or margarine and garlic salt or garlic powder or whatever. And I uh, typically spread that on the bread and I just bake it in the oven on like 450. And it doesn't take long, it takes like 15 minutes. And you take like seven or eight minutes or so when you turn it over and then it cooks and browns on the other side and you're done. And it's good and it works, serves a purpose. So there's the fourth one. So we have all our squash in here. And you know, they can, depending on how big they are, sometimes they're a little challenged to get into the pan. And sometimes you need two pans and that's okay. So here we are. Here's our squash. Now I have to turn my oven on, get that going. And now we're going to get these ready to go in the oven. These little buggers, they don't want to lay in here, right? <laughs> so now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little butter. And now this is just a little, like for flavor. You don't have to get crazy with it. Because, I mean, after all, we are trying to make these recipes a little more diabetic friendly. And now a little pat of butter like this per half of spaghetti squash is not a lot. And I wouldn't get too worried about it. I mean, if you want to spread it a little thinner, you can. And this also helps your spices to stick to the edge of the squash, which is nice because they just, because these are kind of dry when they're raw and the spices don't stick super well. So there is that too. And um, now let's see, we are going to use, I have a salt free garlic and herb. I use these a lot. These are made by McCormick and uh, this is the salt free garlic and herb. This is the salt-free vegetable seasoning. We'll put a little bit of that on there. Why not? I've got uh, garlic powder right here. I typically don't use garlic salt much, only for like like garlic toast, and that's that with this. I don't even know if I have any garlic salt right now. I think I will use this and just add a little table salt to give it that little salty tang that we all recognize and know and love. So I'm gonna put this on. This is the garlic. I'll put this on here. And we're going to do the vegetable seasoning. This is really good. If you're roasting vegetables, like, like I'll chop up like a butternut squash, some carrots, some broccoli, um, you know, whatever you got that you wanna use up. Green peppers, onions, and chop them up, lay them on a tray, toss them in a little olive oil and put this on and roast them in the oven. It is really good. And um, we can do that again in a future video. That would be great. I would be totally down for that. And we're gonna put some of this salt-free garlic and herb on here. Never can have too much garlic. That's my story. I'm a garlic fan and I know I've probably said that before. <laughs> So, yeah, now um, now what we're going to do is we're going to cover this. This is all it is. Super simple. Throw a little butter on there, your herbs or spices of choice, and you are ready for the oven. No water. It doesn't have to steam. None of that. Now, this is the heavy-duty Reynolds Wrap Aluminum Foil. I use this because it when you cover stuff like this, it'll it can break. You know, and the steam releases, and you want the steam in there. And underneath it is the Reynolds Wrap uh, nonstick. This is the nonstick. I love that. I use it all the time. Um, I keep all those right up here on top of my fridge on the ready. And I usually turn the shiny, shiny side down, like it's got the softer side and the shinier side. I mean, I don't know how true it is, but over the years, I had heard and been told that. The shiny side down reflects the heat back onto the food and helps it cook more evenly. 
Now, I don't know how true that really is, but I do it. Why not? Err on the side of caution, right? So we are going to put these over here. Move these. That's my onion and my green pepper for my sauce. There. Now those are ready for the oven. And they are going to take a solid hour, hour and a half. Solid. There's no getting around it because when you put press your fork into them, you want them to be not mushy soft, but so you can get some, I mean, there's a difference between not done, mush, like done, and then mushy soft. If you understand that difference, you should be good to go. So um, now we are going to work on some spaghetti sauce. Now I have some leftover tomato sauce here from the other day that I stuck in my fridge and saved for today's recipe. And I either use tomato sauce face like that and just start from my own, or if I have pre-made spaghetti sauce, which I do, I will use this along with other things to make my sauce go farther. Now the Hunt's spaghetti sauce comes in a 24 ounce can and it is typically on the lower end of the scale for calories. One half cup of this is equivalent to 40 calories and nine carbs. Nine carbs, that's pretty good. So for a half a cup, and I mean, I'm gonna use a solid cup or more on my spaghetti. Let's, let's be real here. So um, I have to get the hamburger out. Now um, I pre-thawed my hamburger the other day and I'm going to crank this stove up and get this going. And I am going to fry up my hamburger and get that started. And um, while this is starting, I'm going to throw this in the pan. Um, and uh, I'm going to put my onions and green peppers in with it. And I will put this in here. I'm just going to break this up. You just break your hamburger up. Not rocket science. I would break it up fairly small if it isn't frozen, if you're not pulling it out of the freezer. And, um, you know, because you got to break it up anyway for your hamburger. And I don't like big chunks of burger. I mean, an occasional chunk is fine, but I like it smaller. And I pre chopped my onions and my green peppers. Now this is quite a bit of onion. I'm not gonna use all of this. I'm only gonna use some of it because I'll put some back into the refrigerator for another recipe. And I work, I put onions and peppers and everything all the time. So, you know, so um, I'm just, uh, you know, however much is good for you. This is about three quarters of a green pepper that I had left over in my fridge. So I'm gonna use the whole thing. And these onions, uh, I'm gonna grab a couple nice big handfuls and throw in there, that's probably enough. There was quite a bit in there. So I got about half left. And that's, must have a little water on the stove there. On the bottom of my pan. Yeah, let me just wipe that off really quick. There. The glass stove tops, electric stoves are new to me, only about a year. I have cooked on gas all of my adult life, and I'm like kind of learning as I go here. <laughs> That's because, you know. Um, so I'm going to add some more of the garlic powder to that. Um, no exact science to measuring. Uh, Grandma D doesn't do much in exact science unless I'm baking. I just say, oh, that looks good. You know, better add a little more. So we're going to put basically the same uh, stuff in here that we put in the garlic or in the uh, spaghetti squash. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and let this start cooking. This is what it looks like. Doesn't that look delicious? Doesn't that look great? Yeah, that's going to be really good. And while that is getting starting to cook, I wanted to show you this really nice little handheld um, can opener. This is from Tupperware. 
and people have had to make videos on how to use this little guy. It's it's a little thingy there. It's all see how that moves like that. Your can lid has to go in between here because this grabs the can lid, and what it does is it creates a edge that won't cut you. Um, I've opened a couple of cans already. This is the lid for this one, and you can set that on there and just set it back in the fridge. I mean, if you have dog food or something like that, that something that you might not be super concerned about it being in the fridge, and that just sets on there, and you can put it back in the fridge like that. Um, so um, I have already opened some peeled and diced tomatoes, and because I only had one can of sauce and that little extra, one can of spaghetti sauce, and that little extra container of us uh, of uh, tomato sauce. <laughs> um, I opened a can of tomato soup. This I got from Family Dollar. This is condensed, and this is a 14.3 ounce can. This is a little bigger than like the Campbell soup cans. I think those are 12, and uh, this is a little bigger, and it's good. It's good, and I got it from Family Dollar, and it was a little cheaper. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my squash in the oven. Now, as we go along, I'm gonna set the timer for an hour, and then uh, we will check it together, and I will let you know if it's ready, which I highly doubt. I highly doubt it's gonna be ready. Now, um, this is just getting started, so this is gonna take a few minutes for this burger to cook and for the mushrooms and onions to cook down. I was gonna put garlic in here today, like some real garlic, and I think I forgot to buy it. So, anyway, so we are going to open this with this, boy, this bad boy, this Tupperware thing. Now, I know that, like I said, people have made videos about this, and uh, I actually had to watch a video because I was like, I can't get that on there. But as I watched the video and someone explained that your can lid has to go between there. So you set it on there and then you squeeze and you can feel, see like it's sitting on there. You see it's between those two mechanisms. And then you squeeze it, it's on there. That's how you know. And then you turn it around and it opens around the edge of the can. And then uh, once you get around to where, you'll know where you started because it'll feel like it's freed up a little bit. There, I just felt it. It kind of went zhoop, and it kind of freed up. So then you take this off. Now this has a little thing right there. See that? That grabs the can lid. So you set that on there. You set that on there like that and give it a squeeze, and it grabs the lid, pops the lid off. Ain't that cool? Super cool. And it, you're not gonna get cut, so if you have your cooking with children, you can teach them how to use this, and they can open cans for you all day long. Bam, that's what I'm talking about. So we've got our three cans of stuff for the sauce here on the ready with our extra container of tomato sauce. Now, while this is continuing to cook and get ready, I am going to show you how to make the garlic bread, okay? Just give me one second, I gotta grab something. Okay, so I had to grab a couple things for the garlic bread and I needed to get a colander to drain my hamburger because it's super close. So um, I use this smaller pan and I can get one, two, three, four, five slices of garlic bread on here. That's enough for me for a solid two meals. Sometimes the girls just gotta have some garlic bread. So um, we've got that and I just wanted to show you again. Um, I believe we talked about this in my last breakfast video, but this is the bread that I use, Aunt Millie's Live Like Bread. 40 calories and six carbs per slice. So you can have a sandwich at 80 calories and 12 carbs. So, you know, any every little bit you shave off of stuff like this, 
you can go to something good. Like you can have a little extra meat on your sandwich or a slice of cheese. You know, so there is that. So um, now let me have a look at the burger. Yep, the burger is ready. So we're going to drain it in here and then we're going to pop it back into the pan. I'm going to turn my burner down because I'm going to be simmering my sauce. This is our burger in here. Now we are going to drain it here. Okay. Woo, hot stuff made it, hot stuff. So we're going to go ahead and put these into the pan. Get the sauce warming up. And I'm going to add the whole can of tomato soup. I remember when my kids were little and money was super tight, it was tomato soup and a can of tomato sauce in there or a cheap can of black and white generic spaghetti sauce. <laughs> and that was spaghetti sauce. <laughs> so, um, and we're going to add our entire can of our Hunt's spaghetti sauce. Now, uh, I recycle. And I do not know how many of you have recycling in your community, but, you know, recycling is important. It's important. Maybe one day, if there's interest, I will talk about recycling and what I do, and I can show some of my recycling items. And, um, just a second, my phone is going off. Just give me one second. Okay. Um, so, uh, and I'm going to add this can of petite diced tomatoes. Um, anyway, um, if, you're, if there's interest and you would like to know more about what I do to recycle, I would be more than happy because I recycle a lot. I say three quarters of my garbage goes into recycling and composting instead of into the trash. So now here is our hamburger mixture. We're gonna dump that in here. Now this is my butcher box hamburger. Um, I've talked about this on a previous video. I did a butcher box unboxing. And for a pound of hamburger, I don't know if you can even see that. That's all of the, um, let me show you. That is all of the, oh my goodness. I'm having an awful time here. Let's try this again. There we go. <laughs> this is all of the oil that came off my hamburger and that's off of a pound. Apologize for the hand in the video. <laughs> so we're going to put you back up here. Now, um, I have got my hamburger mixture and everything in my pan. I'm going to set this aside. And I typically dump that outside. I don't dump it in my trash um, just because it can make a mess. And I, I have a fire pit outside. Sometimes I dump it in there. Sometimes I dump it into the flower bed. It doesn't hurt anything. It's just hamburger grease. As long as it doesn't draw critters to your house, you're all set. So this is our spaghetti sauce. That looks delicious. That I'm going to let that simmer for a little while. I've got it turned down on low. We'll let that go. And now we can focus on our garlic bread. Now, I bought this. I can't believe it's not butter. This is not real butter, but it's a very low calorie, low carb, all the things butter that is soft out of the fridge. And um, we're doing five slices of bread, so we need a little bit. I know that looks like a lot, but we're spreading it on both sides of five slices of bread. So we've got our butter in here and we're gonna put garlic powder on it. You know, you want it garlicky, so yeah. And then I have, this is my salt that I use for cooking. It's Atlantic sea salt and it's got a, a thing at the top to crush it. That's, this is strong, so you don't want to get too wild and crazy with it. If you use these, they're strong. And I have a pepper grinder. This is an older Pampered Chef pepper grinder. And I love this thing. I've had this thing for like 
oh my gosh, 20 plus years I've had this pepper grinder. And um, you can turn the top and get various size of grind, depending on what you like. Now I am also going to put in here, now that I think it over, I got some onion powder here. This is a True Goodness Organic onion powder. And I also have True Goodness Organic Ginger. Now ginger is really good on fish. It's good on salmon. Yeah, it's, it's good for you. Ginger is very good for you. High antioxidants, good for anti-inflammatory, all the things. So, and this is the onion powder. I'm going to put some of that in there. And we're going to take a knife. I'm going to take a knife and we are going to smash this up and stir it around. And then I'm going to taste it and make sure that it's salty enough for me and that it has enough garlic in it. And it takes a little bit, but as it warms up, it gets easier to and more flexible to um, stir it up. You just kind of smash it onto itself and it will spread the goodness. So there's that. I'm gonna take a little taste here. Mmm, good. <laughs> so uh, now we are going to butter uh, both sides. And you'll butter one side of your garlic bread. You'll butter one side, flip it over. I might have more butter here than I need, but we'll see. That's fine if I do. And you'll butter the other side, and we'll go to the next piece. Now, like I said, I cooked this on like 450 degrees, so it's going to have to wait until the squash come out. But like I said, it only takes like 15 minutes, and it's done. So, And you got to watch it because when you're doing side one, the bottom side is what will brown. So when you open the oven, you can't always see it. You know, you got to pick up a piece and look underneath. But um, it, once it starts to brown, it goes quick. So uh, you want to watch it so that you don't serve burn offerings. <laughs> and um, yeah, I got too much butter, but that's okay. I'm just going to put it back in there because it's good on toast or bread with dinner or whatever. Yeah. I'll use it. I'll totally use it. So, and then we've got these two. I cut this one in half because I had a small piece of aluminum foil left in my nonstick Reynolds wrap thing. And instead of opening a new one, I thought, well, I'll just make one or two less pieces and use it. So, there. Done. Whoops. All done. So, see, we do have some left over because you just can't really tell. So, I'm just going to put it back in there. And these are ready to go. And they're going to be nice and golden brown and super crunchy and cheap. So that's my story. Good for you. Inexpensive. You're not adding a whole bunch of extra calories into your diet, which we do not need. Seriously, we do not need that. And in this world, with all the stuff that people eat that is pre-packaged, pre-this, pre-that, um, and I know that my canned items are a pre-packaged item, but they're they're different because uh, they're different than, say, like um, bologna or smoked sausage or macaroni and cheese. They don't have a lot of the stuff in them that those things do. Um, now I will look up a link to this guy and, uh, for Tupperware, I'm not an affiliate for Tupperware, but you know, if you need a new hand crank, uh, thingy for your drawer, um, because in this house right here by my stove, the plug is behind the fridge. So, you know, I have, and this is a small area right here that I cook. It's, it's a small area and, um, I'll show you. Let me just show you. This is a small area. There's my stove. And this is where I do most of my prep cooking. Now, I did put this here that I can turn on and off and use if I want to plug something in. But where am I going to put a can opener? Uh, 
you know, I got my spices in here. I bought this spice rack on my vacation last year. Isn't that cute? And this is metal, so I've got some cute little magnets on there. And um, this is a really nice uh, crock. I bought this from Rhino Clay Works on Etsy. Um, and this guy is does all his own work. Isn't that beautiful with that crackle on there? This is a smaller one. I think I paid like 60 or 70 for this. And they had a bigger one. But again, I've got a small space. So, yeah. And another thing that I have that's really handy is this little guy. I got two of these at a garage sale. And these things go back and forth. I'm not exactly sure what they were supposed to be for. But it works really well up there to hold all my all my pot holders and such as that. So, um... <coughs> Anyway, uh, that's that. So that is why, uh, that is why I'm using a handheld uh, can opener is for that reason. So now I am going to, uh, let me see, I'm going to stir my sauce again here. It should be starting to get warm and maybe start bubbling here pretty soon. I'm going to let this cook for like at least a half hour and then it can sit and work off burner until the squash is ready and uh that looks so delicious i gotta try it can't stand it i gotta try it let's try it doesn't that look good mm. hunt spaghetti sauce is very inexpensive this can is like a little over a buck let me see, is the price? No, there's no price on it. Nothing's got a price on it anymore. It's all by the UPC code. Um, this is roasted garlic and onion. And they have a three cheese, some other ones. I mean, they're reasonably inexpensive compared to other sauces, and it's delicious. I have no problem, you know, um, using it. And uh, so, anyway, mmm. That's some good stuff right there. So um, I am going to let the sauce cook. And uh, then we're going to, we've got 40 minutes. And then we're going to check the spaghetti squash. And then when the squash is done, we will pop the garlic bread in. And it'd be lunchtime. Because it's 11.15 uh, here. So by 12.30 maybe quarter to one, we should be plating. Yay! So um, I'm going to pause right now and I will come back when the timer goes off on my squash. Okay, I need to look that up, I can't forget that.
Okay, so the timer has just gone off for the squash, so I'm gonna pull those out. They've been in for an hour, so we can check them and see where they're at. Um, this has been simmering, the spaghetti sauce. Ooh, that's hot. The spaghetti sauce has been simmering, uh, simmering along really nicely for a little while. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's bubbling just a little. I had to turn it down some more because it was perking right along. Ooh, that's hot. So um, anyway, as I said, the squash has been in for a good hour. Ooh, it's a steamy. There, see, it's not done. I can tell by looking at it, it's not done. So um, yeah, it's still pretty hard. It's pretty hard. It might even take two hours. It, it might, uh, so we'll see. I'm gonna give it another half hour. Ooh. And then I will check it. Now it's it's been in for an hour, so it might move along a little faster in the next 30 minutes, but I can't say for sure. So, you know, vegetables get a mind of their own and you, you think you got it down to a science and then the next thing you know, it's different. So, but you know, it's, it's okay. You gotta be a little flexible. So, okay, so we're going to, uh, uh, let's see. Well, that's strange. Okay. Hmm. Okay, uh, timer. Uh, let's go 45 minutes. There. Let's give it 45 minutes, and we will see where it's at at that point, because I, I think it clearly needs more than 30 minutes. I, I think 45 minutes might get us there. I don't know for sure, but um, it's gonna be so worth the wait. <laughs> the squash is so delicious. It's gonna be so worth the wait. And um, so um, I have talked in the past about my apron that I wear when I cook. Uh, this apron uh, came out of a Reb Fab stash uh, sewing quilting stash box. And it's a monthly subscription that I was getting for a while from a company, Reb Fab Stash uh, Quilt Shop in Moscow, Idaho. Uh, little plug for them. <laughs> uh, I'm an affiliate with Reb's. And I will uh, put my affiliate link in the description below this video. And if you're interested and... Um, you would like to look into the stash box or maybe even see if you could maybe get the pattern for this apron. Um, yeah, they're great. And if you email them at info at rebfabstash.com, R-E-B-S-F-A-B-S-T-A-S-H. <laughs> they will uh, get right back to you within a day or two. They're really good. The girls are really good there and they communicate really well. So this is a super cute little apron and it's got this little blue trim around the bottom. Nice big pockets, I really love it. It's, I lined it so it feels heavier and it helps keep your clothes clean and it's super cute, so there is that. So um, this is, um, let me just turn this camera around here. Okay, so this is the spaghetti sauce that's perking away simmering away in here doesn't that look delicious that looks so good look at that mm, mm, mm. and i have sampled it a couple times i will confess as it's been cooking but that's okay that's okay we will get there so um i'm gonna let this simmer and i have it way down like between two and low so that it can just simmer slowly it has this i like this pot this is a a big huge pot from uh oh my gosh what's her head the red-headed gal she sells pots and pans at walmart gone out of my head but she's a redhead um and uh this is part of her set uh, my son and daughter-in-law bought me this pan and i just love it of course you know they were like well grandma might be able to make spaghetti sauce when we come over so <laughs> Yeah, there's always a plan, right? <laughs> so anyways, um, we've got 42 minutes left on the timer, and I had it set at 45 for the squash. So um, we will be back when that timer goes off, and we'll check it again. And I am probably going to turn the sauce off here shortly and just let it rest. So we'll be back. 
Okay, so we're back. We're going to try this again. Um, I went ahead and gave the squash like 10 more minutes. I didn't even pull it out. I just gave it like 10 more minutes because I thought I wasn't confident that it was going to be ready. So let's, oh, it's, I can hear it boiling in there. I think it's ready. I hear it. I see the steam pouring out of there. So I think it's ready. Woo, that's hot. Woo. Oh yeah, it's done. <laughs> can you see? You see the butter and stuff and the juice boiling in there? Yep, that's done. Oh yeah, that's actually a little farther along than I would have liked it, but that's fine. That's fine. We're going to let that rest and just sit there and chill for a little bit while I... Um, I'm going to... Um, set the oven for the correct temperature. Just a second, I think. Let's try this. There. Okay. It wasn't doing what I expected it to do. Nah, electronics, they're great till they don't want to work, right? So um, I'm going to give that a few minutes to come up to temperature, which is 450. And then I'm going to put the garlic bread in and um, when it's close to being ready to turn, um, we'll come back. That should only be like 10 minutes or so. And then we'll come back and I will show you what I mean by how you got to watch it. And when it's ready, you got to flip it. So we'll be back. So the oven just came up to temperature and I popped the uh, garlic bread into the oven. So there it is in there, starting to cook. And I set the timer for eight minutes, and I'm gonna check it. It may take 10, we'll see. Uh, it just depends, you know, on the weather and the barometric pressure, and things can flux a little bit. But, um, so uh, we will take a look at that in a couple minutes. Okay, so the timer has 44 seconds, <laughs> and I just checked them, and it looks really golden and really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and pull those out to flip them over. Okay, here's what it looks like on the top. See, they're getting crispy and golden, and they're starting to get a little stiffer on the bottom, so we're going to turn those over, and they will continue to get golden on the bottom when they're turned over. Okay, so I'm going to put these back in and set the timer for like five minutes and then I will check them. And I think it should be ready. There. So the timer is set for five minutes. Now while that hopefully finishes up. I've given these a chance to rest and as you can see the liquid in there has absorbed back into the squash. And one thing I wanted to mention as well is if you are trying to watch your caloric intake and pay attention to portion sizes, which, okay, eating the right things is good. Okay, but if you want to have the wrong thing once in a while or something that isn't necessarily the best thing that's good for you, um, like regular spaghetti, if you go to a smaller plate, it's going to make a difference because this is a big dinner plate. This is considered a luncheon plate or something along that. Look at the difference. Look at the difference between these two plates. That's a solid inch all the way around. And I always, almost always eat off of these smaller plates. And that is because if you get a big plate like this versus a smaller one, you're going to fill it and you're going to have a lot more. Although if you're having like a Christmas dinner or Thanksgiving dinner, you might need a bigger plate because there's more variety and you want to try a little this and a little that. And people don't like their food touching and all the things. So then this plate might do. But we're going to use this plate today. We're going to use the smaller one because that's what... I almost always use. So what I'm going to do is 
Um, I'm going to show you how I pull the squash apart. Now this is how the, doesn't that look good? Oh my goodness. That looks so good. And um, now here, you see how the, the little grains are going this way? So if you just give it a little pull, see, you can see the squash is coming out and you can get your strings. Now I'm going to have to hang the phone back up because um, it takes two hands. So we're going to hang the phone back up there and I'm going to hang on to this so that I can get this out of here. And it works really well. And it really looks nice. Oops, that's not gonna work. And um, then you can have a more spaghetti feel to your food. And see, see that kind of looks like spaghetti on there. And it works really well. And you can dig down in behind it and underneath it. Ouch. That is really hot, guys. <laughs> that is super hot. We're going to take a hold of the end because that's not quite so bad. We're going to pull this up here and I'm going to dump this onto my plate. Now, sometimes they will kind of chunk like this, you know, and not necessarily come out in strings, but for the most part, they do. Um, I probably could have let these sit a little longer, but um, this works just fine. Very delicious, very good for you. Um, let me use a spoon. I cannot say enough times about how important it is to try vegetables. I mean, everybody says, I don't like vegetables. I don't like vegetables. Well, you know, sometimes you gotta try them a couple times. Try them a couple different ways, with different seasonings on them and things like that to make sure, oh yeah, those are done. Um, to make sure that um, you're giving it the best chance. Yeah, see this? See, it got a little dark right there because I, and there's the back, because I was not paying attention. See, this one is actually a little black right there. I'm good with it. I like it like that. So there's our garlic bread. And this is our spaghetti squash. And once this cools a little more, it'll be easier to fork out of here and um, you'll have more strings. Um, this was so hot. <laughs> oh, he had a hard time handling it. And it had been out of the oven for like 10 minutes. So 15 minutes. So we're going to go ahead and put some sauce on here. Now, remember, I said that was like just a few calories, like 40 or 60 calories for a half a cup of sauce. Well, I'm going to do more sauce. And then you've got your burger in here as well. And that's going to add some calories to it. But you can use, um, like I said before, chicken hamburger, uh, turkey burger, regular hamburger, ground uh, sirloin, which is lower in fat. You know, there's things you can do. And if you make a big pot like this and put one pound in there, a burger, it's really spread out. You're, you're, you don't even have a half of a hamburger on your plate. If you think about it in that context, a burger is about this big and you've got about half of that on here actually because it's all chopped up in here. So um, I'm going to take this little black one because I really like that. I'm going to try it. Mmm. Mmm. Can you hear that? Super crunchy. Really good. Garlicky. Toasty. Mmm. 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 I'm going to put a little bit mozzarella cheese on there. Um, Parmesan, I'm sorry, not mozzarella. Because I do like it. And I don't always add it. You know, sometimes I don't because I'm 
trying to shave off those calories. There she is. Beautiful, outstanding. So we're gonna give this a try. Now your squash does get a little watery because it's squash. So you might have to like tip your plate and mm, 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 get the juice out. There it is. Very good, very good. Mm. Mm. It's a slightly different texture than pasta. It's not like, pasta's like got that chewy texture. This isn't like that. <coughs> um, but <coughs> it's so good. It's so good and it's such a great alternative. Mm. Mm. And um, I hope that you'll give it a try. I would love to know, mm, kind of stay out of it. I would love to know what you think. I would love to have your opinion once you do try some spaghetti squash. Or um, you can also put butternut squash through a through a specific grinder that grinds it in strings like spaghetti. And they sell it like that in the store as well, in the frozen section. And they sell zucchini like that too. Now zucchini, um, I have tried it. Zucchini can get mushy if you cook it too long. Because what you have to do is you have to put it on the stove in the frying pan and um, cook it in the frying pan with the lid off and the water dissipates, you know, and then um, you can turn it until it's hot, cook it till it's hot. You got to follow the directions on the package for the spaghetti shaped squash. And um, it does work. I have a grinder here. Maybe sometime I can show you how to grind butternut squash. <laughs> I've done it before. I've gotten them in the summertime on a really good sale and ground like six of them and put them in the fridge because, you know, they're good for your dogs too. My dog's chunks of butternut and spaghetti squash are like crack to them. <laughs> they love it. So there is that too. You can cook good for your animals too. So uh, that's it for today. And the link for the um, Tupperware can opener will be in the notes of this video, along with the link to Reb Fad Stash for my apron. If you'd like to reach out to them to get... Um, yourself maybe a uh, pattern to make an apron like mine um, and uh, that's a wrap so that's what I have for today and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I look forward to cooking with you next time so you have a great day this is Grandma D signing off until next time